that always happens. I cuddle him and he bites me for fun. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to play a game that I like to call Books That Spell and I'm going to do the seasonal edition this time around. So basically the game is that I have selected some books that spell the seasons so that we're going to go through all four seasons of the year. I'm going to show you some book stacks that spell that season and also tell you a little bit about the books. I don't know about you, but I think that sounds like fun, so let's get started. I'm going to start with summer, since that is the season I'm currently in here in Denmark. And the books are almost falling. This is what the book tree looks like for that season. For S, I have The Secret Life of Bees by Su Mong Kil. This is about a nanny, a black woman in America who decides to flee the house that she's working in and then the young girl of the family wants to go with her so she does that. It's a very heartwarming and honest story that I liked a lot. I think I gave it like four stars. If the camera angle has changed that's because I just fell over my tripod. For you I have The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. a Fun summer read about a young girl who is taking on a job for the summer to watch dogs. And for M I have Men Without Women by Haruki Murakami. This is a short story collection which is gorgeous by the way. And all the stories revolve in some way around men without women. I think I gave this one like three stars. It's not my favorite Murakami, but it's certainly decent. I also have Maybe Someday by Colin Hoover. This is one of my favorite books of Colin Hoover's because it's about this couple who go through some twists and turns in their love life and I felt it in my heart when I read this book and I think I gave it five stars. I keep stumbling across my tripod, so once again the camera angle might be off, but who cares anymore? For E, I have my favorite book of Richard Russo's and that is Empire Falls. This is about normal life in rural America. It's about these families and how they live their lives and then at one point towards the end of the story, the big twist sets in. And for R, I decided to go for a classic. So this is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. I haven't read this book in ages, but it is about an island and a man who strands there all by himself and he has to survive these severe conditions of being alone on an island trying to find help. Even though it's been some years since I read it, I do remember quite liking it. So that was summer done. Let's continue with autumn since that is the natural chronology of the seasons. The book stack for autumn looks like this. I could have just gone for this book, Autumn by Ellie Smith and be done with this book stack. But that's cheating a little bit and I want to show you a lot of different books. But here we have Autumn for A. This is a book about Brexit and it's also about... Well, it's about Brexit. That's really it. And I liked it enough. I gave it three stars. For you, I have The Underground Railroad by Carlson Whitehead. I haven't read this one yet, so I have it to look forward to. But it is about the underground slavery movement taking place in America in the 1800s, I think, but I will find out. Through Black Spruce by Joseph Boyden. This one I don't recall too much about, but when I think of it, I think of nature and amazing depictions of the wilderness. It's set in Canada and I do remember liking it quite a lot. I gave it three stars. There's another book of hills that is called The Orenda that I loved to pieces and that one I gave five stars. The Unseen World by Liz Moore. This one is about a young girl and her father who starts forgetting things and that naturally scares his little daughter. The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bolgakov for M. So this one is a classic. I have read it but it's a very confusing and kind of daunting story told from the devil's perspective and it's also got to do with the religion. I think it's a beautifully crafted story but you really have to be focused when reading this. I think it's one I will have to reread at some point in the future. And then the last letter is N. Here I have Night Waking by Sarah Moss. I love this book. This one is about a 
mother who abandoned her career when she started having children and she is slowly losing her mind now being surrounded by children and having a desperate urge to go back to work it is time for winter winter is coming and here is my book stack for that season so let's dive into the actual books what i loved by siri who's bed this one i read many years ago I can't remember too much of it, but I looked up the synopsis for this video and apparently it's about two men, their wives, their children and how their lives entwine and then something very mysterious starts happening. I will definitely have to give this one a reread. For I, I have I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith, a beautiful classic, a coming of age story about Cassandra who writes a diary about her life in this castle with her family and it's just an adorable coming of age story. This one is also perfect for reading in the winter time so that fits perfectly. For N, I have New Grub Street by George Kiss in this beautiful Penguin English Library edition. This one I haven't read yet, but I find it intriguing that it's about bookshops and booksellers and about money troubles, so here you have it. Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. She's also the author of Big Little Lies. I think that is her most famous work. This is my favorite book of hers, however, and it's about a family, actually it's about several families and one horrific event that happens at a pool party one night during the summer. This event changes their lives forever and it's just beautifully written, a beautifully crafted story. For E I had to go for Emma by Jean Austen. This one has got the most horrible main character in it that is quite despicable but also in some way quite laughable and lovable. Last but not least, I have Room by Emma Donoghue. This is the Danish cover. This is a psychological thriller which starts out with a mother and her son who are locked into a room and that's basically where they live. The son has never been outside the room and this is what their lives are all about, this setting, which is quite claustrophobic. I have made it to the last season, which is obviously spring, one of my favorites, and here is the book stack. For S, I went for one of my personal favorites and that is A Spool of Blue Thread by Anne Tyler. This one is about family dynamics and that's it, but Anne Tyler writes splendidly about these family members and I devoured this book. It was also shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2015. For P I have The Persian Pickle Club by Sandra Dallas. I have read this one twice because I love it. This one is about a knitting group of elderly women who gather every week during the summer to knit and talk and gossip but there is something going on that they are talking about and that is slowly revealed during the book. This is not your typical knitting club I have to say. For R I have this gorgeous heart bag. This is The Revolution of Marina M by Janet Fitch. This is a historical fiction about the revolution in Russia in the 1900s, early 1900s, and it's about our protagonist who is growing up during this revolution and trying to find her place in the world. This one I particularly loved. I gave it four stars. For I, I have Invisible by Paul Auster, which is my favorite book of Paul Auster's. This one is set in New York and it's about this young man who encounters a very peculiar couple at a night event in New York and then the story kicks up from there. This book plays with narrative and how you can narrate a story in different ways and I just really 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 love it. 1984 by George Orwell. I did cheat a little bit with this one because this is a number but 19 starts with an N. I had to go for this one because I wanted to highlight one of my favorite dystopian classics of all time. This classic is where the phenomenon of Big Brother emanates and it's horrific but it's also hugely important, this fictional piece of work, which turns out to not be that fictional after all. Last but not least, I have here Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. That's a lot of G's, so 
I'm ending with Emphasis, another psychological thriller told in two parts and I highly recommend that you read it. If you haven't already watched the movie, you will be thoroughly surprised. I was and I found this to be very suspenseful and in a very very good way. So that was the end of this game of mine. I hope you enjoyed this video and until my next one, happy reading!